Good morning and welcome to this very special Mass here at St Charles Borromeo. Today, Father Greg celebrates 25 years since his priestly ordination. On behalf of your staff and the parishioners, I would like to thank you, or I should say we would like to thank you, Father Greg, for your dedication to our parish. We are truly blessed to have you here as our parish priest. Since COVID has restricted any ability to have a large party, we would like to invite everyone to here to join us for morning tea in the parish hall. Could you please rise as we begin Mass? I think that has got to be the most somber entrance of all my masses of all my life, okay? I don't know what it bodes for the next 25 years, but in any case, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hey, but technically I haven't made it yet, okay? My ordination was at 6 p.m. in the afternoon, okay, and it was in Spain, so... Don't give me any messages at 2 o'clock in the morning, okay? We're happy to do it now. <laughs> we'll just believe I'm going to survive another 24 hours, okay? But it's beautiful to be able to recognize milestones in a life. But milestones means that you've gone all those miles. And I couldn't have done it with a, without a lot of people. And you guys have been my companions along with these, these fellas, for the last few years, and I'm very grateful to you. That's why I wanted to have this Mass, especially with you. Uh, yeah, limited by numbers because of COVID, we would have had a bit of a uh, really beautiful sort of celebration otherwise, but that's okay. What is so real in all of this is the Lord's fidelity to me. <laughs> uh, he's been very patient with me. <laughs> Believe me, very, very patient with me. And um, I'm very, very grateful for that. I'm grateful for all the people in my life. There's so many of them uh, that have been support for me all the way along. And uh, so that's why today we celebrate this joyful day. It's a joyful day for me as well. Um, and uh, I thank the Lord for his love and for letting me be chosen for this. And I do feel chosen. I do feel that he was um, very kind in, in, for some reason, selecting me. And uh, I want to thank him with this Mass right now. So let's open up our hearts to the Lord. This sin is a reality in all our lives, in mine, in yours, in everybody's. And at the beginning of every Mass, we ask forgiveness because what he wants to do is replace those holes that are there in our hearts. He wants to fill them in, and he wants to bring himself and there's nothing better than that. So let's now ask forgiveness in order to receive all of the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, and all the angels and saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray.
The saint for my ordination is, or saints, Pontian, Pope, and Hippolytus, priest, martyrs. May the precious long-suffering of the just, O Lord, we pray, bring us an increase of love for you and always prompt in our hearts constancy in the, constancy in the holy faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. We also welcome all those who are watching online. Uh, the De La Cruz and Rubia family are watching from uh, Valencia and a whole heap of my other friends in other places. So you are so welcome, and it's lovely to have you here this morning. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. From Paul, apostle of Christ Jesus, through the will of God, in accordance with his promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, dear son of mine, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Son. Night and day I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my ancestors did. I remember you in my prayers constantly, night and day. I remember your tears and long to see you again to complete my joy. I also remember your sincere faith, a faith which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure dwells also in you. That is why I am reminding you now to fan into a flame the gift of God that you possess through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give, you, give us a spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power and love and self-control. So you are never to be ashamed of witnessing to our Lord or ashamed of me for being his prisoner, but share in my hardships for the sake of the gospel, relying on the power of God who has saved us and called us to be holy, not because of anything we ourselves had done, but for his own purpose and by his own grace. This grace had already been granted to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has been revealed only by the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus. He has abolished death and he has brought to light immortality and life through the gospel, in whose service I have been made herald, apostle, and teacher. That is why I am experiencing my present sufferings, but I am not ashamed, because I know in whom I have put my trust, and I have no doubt at all that he is able to safeguard until that day what I have entrusted to him. The word of the Lord. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor haughty my eyes. I have not gone after things too great, nor marvels beyond me. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. Truly, I have set my soul in silence and peace. A weaned child on its mother's breast even so is my soul. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. In you, O Lord, I have found my peace. Alleluia, alleluia. If you stay in my word, will you will indeed be my disciples, and you will know the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and, to disconcert him, one of them put a question. 
Master, what is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Deacon Steve. Hey, can I just pass that little book down to you? Thanks, Steve. Much appreciate it. When I look back over my life as a missionary of Verbum Day, the Verbum Day Missionary Fraternity, and that's 34 years, okay, um, and 25 years as a priest, I must admit it kind of all seems like a bit of a miracle. And um, quoting some people who knew me <laughs> back in my days, uh, they were quite surprised. Um, the, when I was working for Price Waterhouse as a, an up-and-coming chartered accountant, okay, I wasn't yet chartered, I just finished off my, my training, basically, uh, and uh, a long cousin of my family who worked in Price Waterhouse, uh, she broke the news to one of the partners um, several months after I'd gone to Spain and stayed. I was only supposed to be going there for about... Um, two and a half months, and then I'd be coming back. But when I went there, I knew the Holy Spirit was calling me. Um, and when I was there, I felt he'd led me there, but he hadn't told me to go back. <laughs> How's that for a bit of a crazy sort of way of looking at things? But anyway, um, this cousin of my, 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 a very distant cousin of my family, uh, Helen, she went to him one day and said, oh, um, did you know that... Um, um, Greg Morgan, uh, like, he, he won't be coming back. And he said, yes, I heard something about that. He said, what happened to him? <laughs> she said, oh, he's gone off to become a priest. And his answer, he had this booming voice. We called him Big Jim. <laughs> this booming, he said, he what? <laughs> he what? I think those two words are a pretty good indication. He what? Uh, it was kind of like the last thing that a lot of people would have been expecting of me. Um, I was actually um, one of the people charged with the social committee at Pricewaterhouse. There were 500 of us there, and I, I loved organising social things. So I don't think it was the, the thing that they were thinking. Um, and, and even when I got to Spain in December of 1986 on a hunch that the Lord was calling me, um, when I walked into the, the room of the place that we have in Spain, it's in Siete Aguas, so they call it the... The, uh, the La Casa de Acogida. It's the place where you welcome people, okay? I walk in there, and one of our uh, elderly, old, elderly nuns, anyway, she's now departed into the arms of our Lord. Her name's Dolores. Anyway, she told me later on, she didn't tell me then. <laughs> she told me later on, she took one look at me, and she said, in Spanish, she said this, Este no durará ni seis meses. <laughs> Meaning, this one won't last six months. <laughs> <laughs> and she's right, I lasted 34 years. <laughs> but you see, from the most unlikely candidates, God is able to do the most beautiful things. You see, I, I remember in my first years seeing how I felt I was unstable. I wasn't really very a stable sort of guy. Um, you know, ooh, all over the place. And um, one morning um, in my prayer, uh, when I was uh, probably asking forgiveness for the Lord for something I did. <laughs> I remember seeing something that I did when I was a kid, and that was, have you ever, as a child, ever tried to balance a pyramid on its point? <laughs> I had one of these pyramids, and I was always trying to balance it so it'd stay upright, and it always filled one side or to another side or to another side. The only way that you could make that pyramid stand upright was having your hands firmly around it. And that morning in my prayer, I saw God's hands. Me, the pyramid, balanced on its point, completely unstable, <laughs> but standing upright because somebody had his hands around me. And I've often preached to you that God's got his arms around us, 
It's fundamental in my own life of faith. Uh, these 25 years of priesthood, these 34 years of missionary life are possible because God makes them possible. If you remember, um, my predecessor, St. Peter, <laughs> yeah, well, um, a long time back, okay? Um, yeah, well, he kind of exclaimed the same sort of thing when, you know, Jesus said how hard it is for a rich person to enter in the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. And they said, good grief, <laughs> who can be saved? Huh. <laughs> and Jesus looks at them with those eyes and he said, um, for men and for women, impossible. But for God, nothing is impossible. And then you have Mary's mantra when she says, when she heard the angel said, nothing is impossible for God, she said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done unto me according to your word. Now those words, the words of the angelus, are what I pray every morning when I get up and my eyes are not quite focusing on anything. <laughs> not even my nose, okay? Um, and I say the angelus in the morning, those beautiful words, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done unto me according to your word. That is what makes it possible. See, I'm a Verbum Day missionary. Uh, these guys are as well. Is that right? You, 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 you. Well, I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> but we're Virgin Verbum Day missionaries, okay? And I've got my sisters here in Australia to thank as well for my vocation because they made it possible for me. Um, I have my, um, the married couples of my family as well, Verbum Day family. Um, they've also been great companions along the way. And 20, 34 years of communities putting up with me. <laughs> I think that's a miracle in itself. But I chose these readings this morning because I felt that they really speak about what my vocation is all about. You see, you have St. Paul in that second letter to Timothy. And it's beautiful because he says, fan into a flame the gift that you have received. And it said, because God's spirit is not a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and self-control. I'm still praying for those three, okay? <laughs> but I figure if he gives me another 25, then maybe we'll, we'll get somewhere of those three. But it's so true. I mean, look, if you'd seen me when I first began, uh, I, used to, I used to sing at the masses at Fairfield um, Parish. And it happened that my knees would be shaking so much that people would be looking at my knees rather than looking at me as I tried to sing. I, I kid you not, they were physically shaking. Public speaking was always something that frightened me so much. In fact, I never thought I was going to be a preacher. If it hadn't been for one of my deceased brothers, Jesus uh, Contreras, wonderful young priest, he died in his first years of of priesthood in an accident, car accident, with a drunk driver in Venezuela. It was so unfair. Somebody so wonderful as that. But he was the one who was able to, kind of like with Jesus, when he, the guy couldn't speak and he sort of like says effeta and, and he starts to speak. It's beautiful, you know? So my vocation, I look at it as being walking in the realms of the impossible. The beautiful thing is that God chooses us as missionaries and as priests in order to do this impossible thing. The first one is that we bring Jesus into the world. We do it through the sacraments. We bring him close to people. But then we've got the other part of the equation in which we bring people close to God, and that's our preaching, that's our apostolic work. And in the one person, we're meant to be that. That's impossible. But for men, for women, what is impossible in the eyes of God is not impossible for God. And so this beautiful, beautiful first reading, it talks about how St. Paul felt that he was called to be a herald, and he was called, he was called to be somebody, an apostle and a teacher. And that's really what I'm called to be as well. I haven't got there yet, but I want to get there. A little bit of the herald, the apostle, I'm not too sure of, <laughs> trying hard. Um, uh, and the teacher, well, um, I do the best I can. But what I do know is those words of St. Paul, 
where he says, I know in whom I have placed my trust and that he will keep it until the day of Christ Jesus. He'll keep it safe. Yeah. My mum, when we were younger, um, sometimes when, like, I don't know, we, we were given gifts or whatever, like chocolates or things like that, come from a ha- household of seven kids, <laughs> a postal worker. <laughs> we, yeah, we were, we were, I mean, we weren't mm, direly in poverty, but we certainly had a very simple life. But whenever I would be given something like on my birthday, something like that, like chocolates or things like that, mum would hide them out of my reach. <laughs> and I'd give them to mum to hide them out of my reach because she knew I would devour them in the first 15 minutes. And it's this putting things within your reach all the time. Um, It's beautiful. When you know that Jesus is there continually making things possible for you, then you're not afraid. Um, One of the films, funny enough, sometimes people think that films are, are, are not really great for calling people to, uh, to, to a missionary life or a priestly life. Well, my mum, I didn't realise what she was doing, but um, she sat me down to see a film. (laughs) It was called Choices of the Heart, Um, Melissa Gilbert, and uh, it narrates three nuns in El Salvador and a girl by the name of Jean Donovan, who was an accountant. (laughs) She was about 27 years of age, I was 22. Um, Look, the similarity of her life and mine was so, so strong, and yet she went to El Salvador and... um, she was martyred in El Salvador uh, in this movie, Choices of the Heart. I think it's called Roses in December is the documentary. I saw that. And at the end of the film, when they had the credits, I had these shivers going up and down my spine. Do you know the song that they sang? Be not afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. Be not afraid. Watching that film, I just had this inkling that something was in store for me. A film. A film. And along the way, I cannot thank people enough for having guided me. Uh, My mum, you know, in that reading, he talks about Lois, Timothy's grandmother, and uh, Eunice, Timothy's mum. Kit McCarthy, my grandmother, is a legend. I think she's a legend. Now, this is a lady who, with her hands gnarled by arthritis, I kid you not, they were like that. She'd hold a cup of tea. Yeah? Angina, terrible angina. Well, she would go to about four different elderly persons' homes in the district. She lived in Old Guildford. I lived in Villawood, Caramar. And she would sing and dance for them and tell green jokes and do all sorts of funny things like that, okay? Many of them were older than she was. Sorry, sorry, many of them were younger than she was. And... In the end, her heart couldn't hold out. Uh, She died uh, of of a heart attack. But wow, Kit McCarthy showed me the value of service, gratuitous service. Never in my life have I forgotten my grandmother. She wasn't named Lois, Lois. She was named Kit, Kathleen. My mother, Joan Millicent Morgan, also deceased. She died in 2006. Um, I was blessed as a priest to be able to give her the anointing of the sick when I knew that she had cancer. What a beautiful thing that was. And I was able to come back and do her funeral as well as overseas. Well, my mother, God love her, seven kids in the family. And my dad died when we were ten, I was 10 and a half. There were four kids under 16. And she, as a trooper, wow, what a life of service. How hard that was for her. See, I've learned from them, from them, and look, the Patrician brothers, Fairfield, the ones who are over here, Brother Angus, Brother Mark, Brother Mark was my bandmaster for seven years, put up with me, all the crazy things I did. Um, Brother Angus, and then there was Brother Chris, I used to go up on Saturday mornings, mow lawns at Fairfield Patrician Brothers. That's why I'm out on the, <laughs> the lawnmower. It's their fault, okay? <laughs> um, but I learned how beautiful it was to spend four or five hours working hard and feeling, isn't it beautiful, a life of service? I learned that from them. Brother Anthony, who was also the principal over here, Anthony. There are many people like that. There's so many people along the way. So many people along the way. So 25 years of service is not something that I have fabricated. (laughs) It's not something that I've made. It's not something that 
Well, yes, it's fruit of the earth and work of human hands, as we say in the Mass. But the beautiful thing about it is that uh, it's God's love that makes it possible. That gospel that I chose for today, uh, the two commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. I think instead of strength today, we would say body. It means everything. And your neighbor as yourself, well, that's the goal that I have in mind. You just reduce it down to that every time and you've got it right. So um, today is kind of like, um, yeah, uh, at the end of 25 years, it's beautiful, silver anniversary, silver jubilee. I pray that for the next, if the Lord gives me 25, I pray that um, I can become the priest that he wants me to be. And that is herald, apostle, teacher in that first reading. Um, apostle, because I'm not just here in order to preach to you on Sundays. My verb and day vocation is that I be an apostle, and that means that I raise up others who can take my place. Uh, the founder of our community, Jaime Bonet Bonet, he used to always tell us these two words, hacer, hacer, which in, or hacer, hacer, in, in Spanish means to get other people to do, to get others to do. We're not here just to serve you, but in order to build you until you can serve your, the, the other people as well. It would make no sense at all that I was just here in order to preach to you. I'm here to teach you to share your faith. That's my verb and day vocation. Up until now, I've probably been um, involved in so many other things, but uh, they know that's what I want, I want to happen. Teacher, herald, and apostle. So... Um, I leave it at that. I just think it's a, a beautiful thing that the Lord could have given me this opportunity. And so, um, well, my prayer is that I can do that with you. Uh, and I'm very grateful for you guys, uh, my adopted parish, these last two and a half years. Um, I know my style is very different to other people. I know many people found that a little bit strange. <laughs> I, that's been all my life long. <laughs> but what's really beautiful is that, you know, when um, at funerals you often get that reading, it says, um, um, uh, I've gone now to prepare you a place. There are many rooms in my father's house. Well, what that means is that there's a place for all of us in the church, in God's heart. It's a place for all of us. All sorts of styles, all sorts of sizes, do you know, every one of us is called to a mission. And so you're going to get tired of this, but I'm going to keep on saying to you that the purpose of my life is to help this parish move from maintaining what's here to being mission, people in mission. Because I know that that's the reason why the Lord has called me to be here now, and that's why you have the Verbum Day missionaries here as well. It's in order for us to take the dream of Jesus that we can stretch out and touch the lives of many. So forgive me if I've spoken a few too many words this morning. Um, I figured on my 25th, I'd, I'd just stretch it a little bit. Besides, you couldn't go anywhere. The doors are closed at the back. So <laughs> either a captive or a captive audience or captured orders. I don't know what the difference is between the two sometimes. But what I do know is I have been blessed. I'm very grateful. I have the Lord has been so patient with me. My gratitude is because I've made so many mistakes in my life. And, um, and nevertheless, the Lord has been so kind and gentle and good. Uh, and that's something beautiful. You look, at, look back over your life and you can see how you could easily have lost your way all the way along. And I didn't. And that's why today... Um, I know in whom I have placed my trust. And I know that he is capable of holding on to this gift of my vocation until the day of the Lord Jesus, which is a day that he takes me. And I pray that I will be able to help as many people as possible. Again, we're bringing as priests, we bring Jesus and bring him close to people. We also bring people close to Jesus. It's that double table of the Lord every Mass. It's the Eucharist in which Jesus comes, and it's the Word of God in which we try to bring people to Jesus through His words. Um, 
I thank you, Lord, for the gift of my vocation. I thank you that you are able to do the impossible, and I'm so grateful to you for all these years. And I pray, Lord, that my gratitude may show itself in service, better service, giving more of myself, all of my mind, heart, body, my will, my strength, my everything. Um, I pray that you may consecrate that again, just as you consecrated it the first time with me, and that my years of service to you may produce good fruit, fruit that will last, fruit that endures. Amen. Whilst it's not in the liturgy of the day, I think it's appropriate to do, make an act of faith because that's exactly what my life has been in the Lord. So we're going to say together the creed as well. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So friends, out of gratitude for the Lord, for all that he's done, and out of deep joy in my heart that um, he could have looked with favour on his servant as he did with Our Lady, then let's joyfully bring, bring before God our praise and our prayers so that he may do the impossible in us and in others. For the church that the prayers that we offer from dawn until sunset and through the hours of the night will bring hope to the anxious, forgiveness to sinners and grace to the virtuous. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Greg, that in his ministry to the right Glazeville community, that we may affirm, support and celebrate his gift of service to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish and school family, that we may always embrace Father Greg and sustain his ministry by our love, our constant prayer, and our trust in his leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us, that we might have hearts open and ready to say yes to Jesus, called to carry the light of his good news to others as priests sisters, deacons, mothers and fathers, and single people in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have gone before us, especially Father Greg's relatives and friends, may they reach eternal, their eternal reward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those people throughout my life who have inspired me to my vocation, I think of the Lowrys who got me to Antioch and I think of the people before I ever fell over my vocation. I thank them all and for those along the way as well. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for them. Lord, hear us. Lord. Heavenly God, we, your servants, praise you for you stoop from the heights to care for us. Fill our hearts with your love so that we may be worthy servants of you. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we have our offertory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands would become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands would become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away all of my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in professing your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Pontian and Hippolytus, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, in which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Do the second Eucharistic prayer today. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks, Lord, infinite thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for Mulyadi and for Carmen Luisa. I'd like to pray especially for my mother and father, Joan Millicent and Robert Clement, uh, for my grandmother, Kit McCarthy, brother Anthony, and for all those who have died, and for the priest Jesus Contreras. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. The body of Christ. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as though you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit that I should ever be separated from you. Amen.
We give you thanks, Lord, for every day of our lives. All of us have vocation. All of us have heard your voice at one time or another. You call us to life and to goodness and love and to feel fully alive through the power of your spirit. A spirit which is not of timidity, but of power and love and self-control. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit right now. We thank you for the gift of this Eucharist. You've come into our hearts. We thank you for giving us the opportunity now to be your presence in the world as we walk out. And we thank you for the calling that you've made to each and every one of us to become like you, to be your presence in the world, to build bridges leading the people to you and to bring you to them as best as we can. We thank you for all of that and I thank you personally for these 25 years of priesthood, 34 years of missionary life and for all the people I've been able to help in my time and for all the people who have helped me as well. Let us pray. Are there any practical things we need to mention to people? Just one. When Mass is concluded, can you just sit down on, and um, just watch what we have for Father Greg? Oh. <laughs> should, I, should, should I be afraid? <laughs> Very afraid. <clears throat> Let us pray. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which blessed Pontian and Hippolytus burned ardently as they gave themselves unceasingly for your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, do we go in peace or do we stay in peace? Well, stay in peace. Yeah. I'm going to kiss the altar anyway. That place you're seeing is a sanctuary on the island of Mallorca. They had a terrible haircut. I'll never forgive them for cutting my hair that way. <laughs> but uh, this was actually in the island of Mallorca. Um, there's a sanctuary to Our Lady called the Sanctuary to Our Lady of Yuc, double L-U-C. And it's a huge place up on a mountain. Um, and that's where we had the ordination. There were 25 of us from all around the world. Uh, and we had the unusual distinction of having both an archbishop and a bishop ordain us. So you'll see one is actually standing up and the other is then sitting down later on. He's, otherwise it might have been a, a bishop's um, ordination. <laughs> yes, that's me with that haircut, yes. <laughs> brothers and sisters. That wasn't my voice when I was ordained. <laughs> when you see us laying down there, this, this came, our ordination came at 6 p.m. after a whole weekend. We were so tired, some of them fell asleep when we seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength.
<laughs> Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today's news is about the very special person that always allows God to guide him throughout his life journey and take you so many lives. From Mallorca, Spain, where he was ordained, then Colombia, Venezuela, the Philippines, Ireland, Germany, the USA, Italy, and finally we have him back here in Australia. We just all want to say happy 25th anniversary of your ordination. <laughs> Congratulations, Father Greg Morgan. You are an awesome Paris priest. You, you made, made the, the Paris alive. I told him we had to do busking somewhere at some stage, but he's doing it by himself. That's not fair, okay? Hey, Father Greg, congratulations on your 25-year ordination uh, anniversary. Um, you're a rock star of the altar, and um, St. Charles is blessed to have you there. And uh, I love coming to, to hear your sermons, and uh, you know, I always find something inspiring, something funny, uh, something I relate to, and uh, that's what we need to keep us all engaged and keep us coming back. Anyway, happy anniversary and rock on. I'll see you soon, pal. Hi, Father Greg. Congratulations on the 25th anniversary of your ordination to the priesthood. It's not hard to see your passion and dedication to the call. I don't doubt that there'll be another 25 years to follow. So take care and enjoy the celebrations in what will certainly be a memorable year for so many reasons. Congratulations, Father Greg, on your 25th anniversary. We look forward to the next 25 years. Perhaps I can be your organist then. <laughs> Buenos dias, Father Greg. Spain, Colombia, Venezuela, the Philippines, Ireland, Germany, United States of America, Rome, Rosebury, you finally made it to ride in Gladesville. Complimenti, Father Greg. Muchos gracias for your service and, of course, your quirky sermons. Congratulations, Father Greg. God bless you always and thank you for being our parish priest. Congratulations, Father Greg, on 25 years as a priest. Looking forward to the next 25 years to see where God leads you. You remind me of the Jerusalem bunny running around the parish everywhere. Our parish has been blessed by you and the Bourbon Day community. Enjoy your day. Congratulations, Father Greg. You've made a wonderful contribution to the church over the last 25 years. And we've noticed the wonderful contribution you've also made to our parish over the last few years. And we wish you every success in moving forward. Hi, Father Greg. Congratulations on 25 years. Wow, what a fantastic effort. 
Thank you so much for all the effort you put in. I've been fortunate enough to see everything that you do behind the scenes and I know how much work you really put into your ministry to make sure that every time someone encounters you, every time you celebrate a mass, every time you, you do a baptism, people really encounter Jesus in you. So thank you so much and I wish you all the best and here's to another 25 years, eh? Congratulations, Father Greg, and I wish you ever blessings for the next 25 years. Congratulations, Father Greg, on your 25 years. I look forward to working with you for another 25. Hi, Father Greg. On behalf of myself and the Finance Committee, I'd like to congratulate you on a wonderful 25 years as a priest. And just to let you know how appreciative we are of you being at RGP, and we hope you're going to be with us for many more years. Hey, Father Greg, congratulations on 25 years in the priesthood. We are so blessed to have you as our parish priest. Thank you for all the joy and enthusiasm that you give to each and every person that you meet. Congratulations, Father Greg, on your 25 years of, since your ordination in the priesthood. We appreciate all you do. Hi, Father Greg. We wish you a happy anniversary. We thank you for your energy, the passion and your faith that you bring to our parish. Um, you've definitely given us the vision of going forward in a missionary uh, way in how we live our lives and we hope that we have your ongoing support and leadership for many more years to come. Congratulations Father Greg and uh, thank you for all the great ministry you uh, you provide for the parish and especially for the college here at Holy Cross. It's great to have a patrician old boy here in the parish of Ride. Yeah, we're very much taken by your uh, homilies and uh, the amount of effort you put into uh, spreading the word. We're grateful that we've got you here at Holy Cross and that we have a man like you to, to bring us together and make us the thriving Catholic community that we're becoming. Congratulations, Father Greg, and our very best wishes to you. We heard that you are celebrating your 25th anniversary of ordination. What a wonderful, wonderful milestone. We are missing you at seeing you around at Rosebury. Um, but um, uh, congratulations once again, our very best wishes. Hi, Father Greg. Hi, Father Greg. It's John and Rosemary. We just want to congratulate you on your 25th anniversary of the priesthood. We're very proud of you. It's a wonderful commitment all those years, and we need good men like yourself. Hi, Father Greg. Wishing you a happy quarter of a century anniversary of your ordination in that time you affected so many people's lives you've been a great friend to both kelsey and i and you've been a really big part of us getting to where we are today with our little family thank you for your ministry thank you for your example of the gospel thank you for living out that message of christ in such an authentic way and um, in all the different parts of the world that you've done that as well so Wishing you a wonderful celebration and happy anniversary. Oh, there you go. Hi, Father Greg. Happy 25th anniversary of your ordination. Congratulations, Father Greg. Congratulations, Father Greg. God bless you. Congratulations, Father Greg. May your service and harvest in God's vineyard be more joyful, plentiful, and rewarding. Congratulations, Father Greg, for 25 years as a priest. Energy and enthusiasm, love for Jesus and one another all around the world. Happy silver anniversary to Father Greg. May God keep blessing you to do his great work. Congratulations, Father Greg, on this memorable occasion. May this anniversary bring happy memories to you. May God bless you richly as you continue to serve him and his people. Congratulations, Father Greg. On today, the 4th of August, the great Saint John Vianney would be well pleased with your innovations in making exposition of the Blessed Sacrament more available to parishioners. Congratulations, Father Greg. Thank you very much for your spiritual guidance and particularly your hard efforts during COVID to keep our community praying together. I hope you have a great day and that your fellow priests spoil you a great deal. Congratulations. Hey, listen to that one. Okay. We appreciate you very much at St Charles and we wish you long life and good health. Wanted to wish you a happy 25 years in the priesthood. Hi Father Greg, happy anniversary. Wish we could be there with you to celebrate. Hello Father Greg, happy anniversary. Hi Father, happy anniversary. 
Congratulations, Father Greg, on 25 years. That's awesome. I hope to see another 25. Well done. Congratulations, Father Greg. You've done very, very well. Congratulations, Father Greg. God bless you, and you always be a blessing to your people. Happy anniversary, Father Greg, and thank you for the stuff you do for us. Congratulations, Father Greg, on your 25th uh, anniversary. Congratulations, Father Greg, 25 years. That's such an amazing achievement. We wish you all the best. Thank you for 25 years of service. We look forward to 25 years. We thank you for coming to our parish and bringing the birthday community with you. You have deepened our spirituality and we've learned a lot about the importance of the mission. We look forward to hearing your inspirational words every Sunday. Thank you, Father Greg, for everything you do for the community and our parish. We are so blessed to have you, and what a wonderful service, 25 years to God and, and the kingdom. I hope you can bring more people into the kingdom through your inspiring masses and all your service you do for everyone. On behalf of the whole college community, we'd like to thank you for your contribution to our school. It's a profound impact on the school, and Wesley morning masses wouldn't be the same without you. Attitude and high energy during masses are what makes it entertaining. So thank you. God bless you, Father Greg, for being a priest for 25 years, and congratulations, you great priest. Hi, Father Greg. We just want to say congratulations for being a priest for 25 years. We miss you and love you so much. Congratulations, Father Greg, on your 25th anniversary of ordination to the priesthood. It's an amazing achievement and we're all really proud of you. Thank you especially for your leadership within our parish over the last couple of years and during this year in particular when we've had such uncertain times. You inspire us each and every day. And you're always in our prayers. Thank you Father Greg for being our priest for 25 years. Thanks for everything that you've done for all of us. Thank you so much for all the vitality and enthusiasm that you bring to our parish. Um, you should be very proud. We're very proud of you. Um, we're very happy that you've come to St. Charles and we thank you for everything that you do for us. We are truly blessed to have you, Greg, as our parish priest. God bless you and thank you. Hi, Father Greg. Congratulations. Or as the primary school children come to Happy anniversary, Father Greg. Happy anniversary, Father Greg. Happy 25th anniversary. Happy 25th anniversary, Father Greg. Happy 25th anniversary, Father Greg, and God bless you. Congratulations, Father Greg, on 25 years as a priest. Congratulations, Father Greg. Congratulations, Father Greg. Congratulations. Congratulations, Greg. First 25 of the worst. Keep going. Congratulations, Father Greg. Yay! Congratulations, Father Greg. Woohoo! Felicitaciones, Padre Greg! From Maria Volpicella, the Maroon family, and the Malcolm family. From From all the ladies in the Catholic Women's League. From Lily. From Edna and my cat here, Simba. It's T here. Phil and Neville Fernandez. From, from the Papilios, Mum, Joe, Vincy, Julian, Daniel, and Andrew. From the Augustino family. Lots and lots of love, Mum. On behalf of the Morel family. On behalf of the students of St. Charles. Congratulations, Father Greg, for 25 years of being a priest. How you like the cake? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thank you, that's beautiful. Uh, no, I didn't know about that one, so that was... Uh, yeah, quite. Thank you very much for all that you put into that. That was really very, very lovely. Thank you for um, your support and your love. It's great, and I know that all the brothers here as well, they feel very much your support. That's been fantastic. So, well, let's um, continue on, let's finish off the Mass, and uh, um, please, God, uh, he'll bless all of us. Maybe he'll give me another 25 years, who knows, hopefully, yeah. See if we get 25 years out of it. In any case, for as long as I live and as long as I have breath in this body, 
I'm going to continue to, to do what he wants of me as much as I can. So please stand and let's have our... Sorry, we finished, have we? Well, I'm going to give you a final blessing, so it's too bad, okay? <laughs> May the Lord inspire you and touch your hearts. May he fill you with wonder as to the adventure that he wants to lead you on. May your lives always be filled with goodness and may you have hope that tomorrow will always be better than today. And we ask your blessing on all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to sing the Salve Regina. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita dulce do, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules fili eve. A te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, Advocata nostra, illos tuos misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende.